Hey guys, welcome back to the Dutch Investor Channel. I've been receiving a lot of requests from people that they want me to explain to them the financial statements and how I look at them. So I want to start off today by explaining to you guys the balance sheet and I'm going to explain it very simply. So if you have a uh, financial background, um, this video will be pretty easy to understand. Um, but I just want to make sure that I start at the start. Basically, I start at the beginning and I'm going to work my way up. So this is going to be for beginners. And I'm going to have like a, for like a medium level and I'm going to have an advanced level. And at the advanced level, I'll be discussing the traps in a balance sheet. And I'll be doing this for all the financial statements that are available. So I'm going to go through balance sheets, income statements and uh, cash flow statements. But I thought we start with the balance sheet. So balance sheet, I guess the sheet, the, the word says it already, balance. The balance sheet needs to be in balance. That's the most important part to understand. Why? Because if you look at a balance sheet right now and you're going to look at it on Finance Yahoo or just in the investor relation, relations page, then these are usually the listed like in one row. But traditionally, it would be a balance. So you have a left side and you have a right side and they need to be equally uh, in this case, uh, I have an equal number, so they need to be the same. That's why I use this picture. I'm going to go a little deeper right now. So a balance sheet. This is basically how a traditional balance sheet would look. I added a date because I want to em emphasize that the balance sheet is a moment. And why I want to emphasize that it's a moment because if we're going to go at the advanced level we're going to look at what are the risks from a balance sheet and the fact that it is a moment is actually pretty risky but we'll get to that later so keep in mind the balance sheet is just on a date they decide okay we're going to set up the balance sheet now and that's when you have all the data but a company well they are doing stuff like 24 7 sometimes so keep in mind that it is a moment so what is on the balance sheet on the left side, we have assets. On the right side, we have liabilities. Those are the main things to think about. So what is an asset? An asset is something that you own. So think about desks, buildings, cars, everything of that sort. Everything that you own that is yours as a company, that is an asset. So that will be placed on the left side of the balance sheet. On the right side is everything that you owe. So small difference, a letter in this case, but I think this is a very nice distinction to be made. So everything that you owe, so think about debt, short-term debt, long-term debt, um, accounts payables and stuff like that. So everything that you owe. It looks like this is pretty even, but there's something else and that is shareholders equity. And how do you calculate shareholders equity? So you have all your assets and then you do that minus liabilities and then you get your shareholders equity. So think about this. So everything that you own minus everything that you owe, that's basically shareholders equity. So that is basically your net worth. That's how you could see it. So let's say you're not a company, but you're a person and you have $2,000 on your bank account, but you have a, a loan that you need to pay off and it's a thousand dollars. So $2,000 minus $1,000. So your net worth, or in this case, shareholders equity would be thousand. So that's basically how it works. And keep in mind that the shareholders equity tends to be on the right side of the balance sheet because you tend to have more assets than liabilities. If it goes negative, it tends to be here as well, but just think of it like in the basic terms, that's how you look at it. So let's dive a little deeper now and let's look at assets. So there are several kinds of assets. There is non-current tangible assets. There is non-current intangible assets. And there is current assets. So let's go through this. Let's start with tangible assets. Tangible assets are in physical form and value and you are able to sell them, but you do not expect to sell them anytime soon. So you expect them to 
use them longer than a year. So think about a house or a building or a factory or a car or a truck or a piece of land or yeah, basically anything. Could also be a desk or a computer because yeah, you don't tend to buy something like that and then think, okay, I'm, not, I'm gonna sell that one in a year again. No, you tend to use those for several years. So that's tangible assets. So it's physical form. Next one, intangible assets. These are in non-physical form and you are not able to sell them or you're not able to liquidate them, I should say. So you, you cannot really exchange them for money. Think about goodwill. So the extra price that you pay for a new company. So if you take over a company and they have a good name, then you pay goodwill and that's considered an intangible assets. What else? You can think about uh, or a recipe or something that's very valuable. You could also put that there. Um, medicine, stuff like that. If you have, um, what's it called? I forgot the name. Uh, a patent, I guess. A patent. Yeah, sure. That will be here as well. So that is something to keep in mind when you're talking about non-current and intangible assets. Obviously, you do not expect them to lose them within a year as well, but I feel like this is more important than uh, like the non-physical form and uh, the fact that you are not able to liquidate them is more important here than actually the fact that you're expecting to use them for a year longer, for longer than a year, sorry. So let's go to the last one. Current assets, <coughs> sorry. Current assets. So current assets are a physical form and they have value and you are able to sell them but you expect to sell them within a year. So what's what could this be, current asset? You can think about cash. You can think about uh, money that you still need to receive from your customers. You can think about your inventory. Like all those kind of things, those will be current assets. Let's go to the liability side. So the liabilities. I might have a little bit of a voice problem there because I switched a bit too soon. Apologize for that. Uh, liabilities, you basically have two things. You have non-current liabilities and you have current liabilities. So let's start with non-current liabilities. That's basically money to be paid for longer than a year. I could just say debt, but it recently it has become a little bit weirder so i'm just gonna say money to be paid you can also think about a uh, tax that is deferred into the future you don't have to pay yet and uh, just long-term debt those are basically the most common ones and um, yeah the current liabilities is basically the same but it's short term so it's less than a year so not just uh, short-term debts but also mm, like if you bought stuff from your suppliers and you need to pay them. So that will also be shown there. What is something interesting that will also be considered a current liabilities and that is something that will go deeper into in the advanced part, I believe, is that if you have revenue that is deferred into the future, which is very interesting now with the, with the outbreak and the... Um, What's happening to all the planes so let's say this year you're gonna buy a ticket for next year then it will be considered a current liability that is called deferred revenue because you're gonna use it within a year and uh, it could even be a non-current liability by the way if it's longer than a year but it will be considered a current liability and this is basically to even out the fact that you have already received cash that you haven't collected as income yet, as revenue. So keep that in mind, because if you're gonna look deeper into the balance sheet, that is something that you wanna double check, because there is more risk there for if there is a black swan event, but there is less actual debt. So if you go, like if you're gonna use some, uh, look at some ratios to check the health of a company, you may not wanna take this one into consideration. But if there's a black swan event, you want to make sure that there's not too much of that because that means that the money that they have on the balance sheet at cu as current assets, that's going to be uh, maybe money that they need to pay back because it was deferred revenue. 
So that's something, but we'll get into that later, but I, uh, I wander off again, so I apologize for that. So let's go to the, the last part. And that was shareholders equity. Shareholders equity is basically just the assets minus liabilities. There's not much to it, but there's a little bit of a difference because yeah, we have all these shares and these shares have a, a, a common value or a nominal value. And this is a number that you could see when you look into the financial statements or you look at the, the 10 Ks or the, the annual reports and you'll see that they have like uh, 6 million shares outstanding at a uh, value of 0 0.01 uh, dollar, something like $1 cent basically. So that's something that you could see and you might be wondering, well, that's not a lot of money and the price on the stock is like $100. So why is that the difference? Well, that's basically what is called a common stock. That's the common stock price. So that's how they have decided it at the start. And if people are willing to pay more for the, the, the stock, like the share, that's basically the price that we see fluctuating every day, then yeah, that's a different price, but they won't list that here. They're just gonna list the common stock. So it's something that they decided when basically they started the company. And then there's something else, and that's retained earnings. This is basically the earnings that they have received throughout the years, and they haven't really paid them uh, to the shareholders or have used them in any other way. So just backup money, I guess you could say. Backup earnings, I, uh, no, it's not really backup earnings, because that would be close to deferred revenue, but it's like backup money. Like you don't want to give return that to shareholders, so you're going to have that on your balance sheet. That's basically it. So that's basically the balance sheet uh, explained in about 12 minutes. Uh, very basic, I'm just explaining to you the words that you were gonna see and what you can expect under each of these like labels. I think the asset one is very, very interesting. Liabilities kind of speaks for itself. So in the next video, I'll be going through a little bit more deeper. I'm gonna look to what is under these assets and, and liabilities and in the advance we're going to look at the, the risks involved and um, yeah that's basically it i hope you guys enjoyed it if you like these kind of videos please let me know down in the comments below if you learn something or you think others will learn something please leave a like because at the end of the day i do wish that uh, i do hope that this channel is educational so that's the the goal and um, yeah stay tuned for the for the next series and have a, for now have a nice uh, nice evening